So, I get into these rather long phone calls with my family twice a week. Uh, it's one of the things that keeps me sane. Uh, I grew up my whole life in California, and um, living two states away from family rather than one or two cities is weird. It's It was weird when I got here. And it was weird uh, when um, when I uh, moved for the first year, I, I had, like, anxiety attacks and regular nightmares about losing members of my family. About not being there when bad shit happened. About never coming back. So... One day, I was just like, I needed to call family to feel better about them, to make sure that they were okay. And so I did that, and it sort of developed this tradition where, like, I'll call them regularly. And it keeps me sort of, uh, arguably, a little bit more stable. Um, but especially over the past years, uh, I got some fucking bumps on my face. Hoping those clear up soon. Uh, especially uh, over the past few years. Um, like, well, two years anyway. I've been getting increasingly political with them. Um, and occasionally just going on my weird fucking Alex Jones style rants. Actually, you know, come on, like, uh, bring it a little bit more realistically. It's probably closer to fucking David Icke or, like, Doug Stanhope. But, like, the point is, that, like, uh, I, I, I get into these long, depressing rants and, and oftentimes end up just bringing the entire call down. Me? Be a fucking buzzkill? Who'd have thunk it? So, Today, I got into this nice little buzzkill conversation with my family, uh, and and it uh, it was basically about because I have this, and I'm I'm not sponsored by these people, even though you know actually I would take that deal. <laughs> I'm not sponsored by these people, but uh, I bought this uh, multiple times recently because it's a good product. It has uh, a hemp protein, pumpkin protein, chia protein, and a bunch of fucking mushrooms in it that, like, aren't that kind of mushroom. They're just uh, good for digestion. They're antioxidants. They're fucking... <clears throat> they'll help you focus, that sort of thing. Like, it's just a general boost cocktail, and I like it. It works, even though I also hate the way it goes down my throat. Uh, my dad advised me to maybe... Um, let it soak for a bit so that it wouldn't be harsh anymore. Which actually kind of makes sense. So, I'm going to be trying that, especially since, like, he uh, was raised in a nursery. So he actually probably knows quite a bit about, like, how to make plants tolerable in terms of ingestion. But all of that aside, it's hemp. And I remember the first time I brought up to, to like, the family that I had bought hemp products. They were actually concerned that this hemp would get me high. Because they're both uh, Christians, and they're both pretty straight edge. And they don't like the whole idea of drugs. So I had to assure them that uh, these products aren't marijuana products like that. They're just the hemp part with all the cannabinoids leached out of them or you know just the parts of it that didn't have that because it's not just for that i also went over the fact that you can increase or decrease the amount of cannabinoids in a plant and also increase or decrease the amount of available hemp that a plant can produce by just doing different plant husbandry or whatever it's called um and the conversation then went to the fact that, yeah, you know, uh, 
the reason people get high is because shit sucks. And I went on this rant. And like afterward, it occurred to me that maybe I should just put it in fucking video form. But just to be completely fucking clear, I want to get started with reading this chart here. Uh, the many uses of hemp. Hemp is the strongest natural fiber in the world, known to have over 50,000 different uses. And this thing just lists some of them. Uh, the stock can be used for textiles, including clothing, diapers, handbags, denims, shoes, fine fabrics. Uh, it can be made into paper for printing, newsprint, cardboard, packaging, or your stupid fucking straws. If you... Okay, here's a mini rant. If you need a paper straw just don't use a fucking straw just get a fucking cup with a, a lip that opens or something like that you f fucking i i can't i can't stand paper straws they're fucking worthless and they dissolve and just don't do that if if you need to have something to suck off of just make it a sippy cup or something like that I remember when I first saw my first Starbucks sippy cup, and uh, and I was like, you know, this is actually a really fucking good idea, because what it was was a big old plastic swoopy oosh off the top with a hole in that, and then you drank from that, and it was fine. What fuck do I need a paper straw for? Uh, you fuck paper straws, like... They dissolve. They're bad. And also, they you need more than one of them when they dissolve, and it basically just encourages you to drink your drink faster, which ironically probably makes you consume more things that are bad for you and the environment. Ooh, it's not plastic. It's not going to gore anyone. It's not metal. It's not going to stab a tortoise. Ah! Oh! So? If, you, if you're really that concerned about the environment, just stop using fucking superfluous bullshit like straws. You don't need one. You're fucking grown up. Find a solution. Anyway. <laughs> um, industrial textures. Rope. Canvas. Tarps. To get back to the hemp. But fuck paper straws. God damn fuck paper straws. Um, carpeting. Netting. Caulking. Molded parts. Building materials, uh, fiberboard, insulation, acrylics, fiberglass substitute. Seeds you can use for industrial products, oil paints, varnishes, printing inks, fuel, solvents, coatings. You can use the, you can use it for foods. Hemp seed hearts, hemp seed oil, hemp protein powder, EFA food supplements. You know, like this bullshit. Protein powder, you know? Because it's fucking good for you. Uh, body care. Soaps, shampoos, lotions, balms, cosmetics. Um, you can use the leaves for absorption, uh, for animal bedding, and mulch and compost. Um, you can also use, and this is all from an image, by the way. Um, <laughs> you can also use uh, uh, hemp uh, roots for organic compost compost and nutrients remedy for conditions such as arthritis or joint pain fibromyalgia and eczema uh and this is just like a short list too there are like so many fucking uses and it says hemp can yield three to eight dry tons of fiber per acre so uh this speaks for itself so why is it illegal well because there needs to be a war on drugs. We must keep the streets clean. Crime something something. Well, no. It's not that. What it is, in fact, is the fact that the war on drugs is part of a self-perpetuating machine of control for profit and power. And hemp is a really good example of that. The reason this all started to kick off is because my dad asked a question, you know, it makes you think, after I listed some of the benefits of hemp, he said it makes you think, what made people switch from doing all this useful stuff with it and switch to turning it into a drug? And I was like, <laughs> I went off on the fucking war on drugs. 
because fuck the war on drugs. I mean, fuck paper straws, arguably equally, but fuck the war on drugs. Because the war on drugs is, like, bad. What what the war on drugs does is it fails to acknowledge the basic, the, the basic, basic situations uh, in terms of social life that would cause people to want drugs in the first place. Pure and simple. There's an old experiment that I reference a fuck ton when trying to convince people that the war on drugs is a bad idea. And uh, I did it yet again the other day in a server full of kids who don't, like, fully grasp politics yet. Because, you know, they're kids. Um, I went over the fact that, like, rat... Po and I said the same thing in this conversation with family because... I'm kind of an asshole, and I'll still talk about politics with family, even though it makes them uncomfortable. But, like, uh, there's this experiment called Rat Park. You look into it. And basically, they gave certain rats a shit life. They they took away their social uh, life. They, they, they fucking gave them no rats to talk to and nothing to do. They took away everything the rat would care about. And then they gave the rat a shitty meal every day and also uh, two bottles with fluid in them. And those bottles, one of them, had cocaine water in it. And the other one had regular water in it, just normal water water. Well, wouldn't you know it, the rats who were in the cage with shit lives and no community, uh, they turned to cocaine. Because if you got nothing to do and nobody to do it with, you might as well just get fucked up. And they took the same kind of rat and uh, put it in another experiment where they didn't do that. They didn't do that. And because they didn't take away their sense of community, because there was shit to do, because it was interesting and not terrible, almost no rats became addicted to cocaine. It was still equally available, but they didn't fucking give a shit because they didn't want that shit. They said no to drugs. This has been proven in so many uh, instances. Oh, and yeah, by the way, I didn't yell at my family. This is for the camera right now, and because I'm fucking exhausted and it keeps my eyes open. But yeah, I don't even fucking yell at family like this. But I do emphasize the same things because it's worked in every situation it's been tried in uh portugal is a good example right like they 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 decriminalized drugs and then uh, and had like safe injection sites and, and shit like that and suddenly drug use dropped because they weren't locking up Druggies anymore. They weren't putting these people in fucking prison. So suddenly they didn't feel as oppressed by society. There was one less reason to escape from society and just use the same drugs that they know will give them that positive feedback loop they want. Because shit sucks. Society sucks. Okay. There's an economic downturn from COVID. There's a constant economic struggle where the middle class is disappearing and the lower class is getting increasingly homeless, um, the, the, the landlords have to evict or they will lose all of their properties and also themselves because they won't be able to feed themselves. They'll just be another homeless person with a squatter living in their house. Um, and a variety of other like bull bullshit associated with that, including the fact that the subprime mortgage market was basically created by the state um, and, like, ultimately, a lot of these things connect to make a really shit housing market where there are a lot of houses that are empty and just owned by banks who are predatory and figured they'd be able to reclaim ev them eventually anyway. And, and, like, all of this combines with a shit uh, job market where, like, a decent chunk of the jobs uh, are, are based on regulatory capture and, like, wage demands, like basically unable to hire the unskilled so you have to really beg and scrape for low skill labor and you eventually may not get it at all um 
This combined with the fact that inflation due to regular government hyperspending is creating a dollar that is basically bound for default irrevocably. And all of this combines to create the situation where the economy fucking sucks. And since we all have to rely on this economy, um, and, and you know, this economy which is also rigged by the stock market, uh, which can fuck people up over, over anything it wants, um, that's the reason that the, the, the GameStop stonks happen, because, hey, shit sucks. Um... And and it's partially because of all these institutions that can leverage their financial power and short stocks betting on the company's failure, uh, which is why suddenly these companies succeeding meant that they didn't have enough uh, enough enough stocks on hand and they couldn't successfully short the stock uh, and make a profit off of it. So they basically lost their shirt, you know. Because people know that one of the reasons things suck is because of the way the market is set up intrinsically. And they kind of felt like they could get some of that power back. Um, so that, combined with the cryptocurrency market being fucked with by Elon Musk and a bunch of other rich cronies who don't actually give a fuck about the environment, they just want to make a bunch of money and profit off the ones they do like. Um, uh, fucking... Race relations are worse now than ever, like I went over with the Democrat rant yesterday. Uh, fucking, <laughs> the, the QAnon people are being locked up because they all subscribe to various honeypots like Parlor and shit, which I've also talked about. And a variety of just other things. The, the police have more mi military vehicles now than ever, they're being more militarized now than ever, they're getting more power now than ever. And it's all considered a backlash to anti-cop sentiment. I saw this video the other day that I tweeted out. And in this video, this cop was like, <laughs> he was punching a mirror. And then suddenly, his wife is there. And the music changes from one emo-ish song to another emo-ish song. While he's being all deep in your quest. And the cop just wants a hug. And then his wife is there suddenly. And she's on the counter with her legs wrapped around him. And she has his hand in his and and then she like moves into a hug and it's all like eh, precious but but it's a fucking cop and cops beat their wives a lot so ah uh, i don't know how wholesome that is but like let's be real clear um when we say that police brutality is worse than ever let's be real clear when we say that like the military industrial complex still marches on despite that costing a fuck ton of money while the people still get the shaft and don't get their full $2,000 checks. Just imagine all that money going to bombs instead of you. And this is just the Biden presidency, right? This is just the suck-ass Biden presidency where crime Bill Biden, who put a bunch of uh, people in jail, and, and, and Kamala, who did the same. Um, these two people who are responsible for splitting up a ton of minority families and also uh, non-minority families and you know, just fucking shut up in general. This is how society is. You know, it sucks. It sucks. Community is bad. There are more homeless people living on the street now than ever before. That's the reason LA is saying they've got to be dealt with, man, like soon. But like they haven't actually formed a policy to do that, which means that eventually all of this is going to come crumbling down even in fucking LA. Um, and ultimately we're ending up with uh, a gigantic clusterfuck where uh, the <laughs> the biggest cities are going to implode while the dollar defaults and everybody runs for the hills. Um, before the eventual lockdown happens, before all these walls are used against us, before the national security state, which has more power now than ever uh, because the intel intelligence apparatus has been enabled to fight covid because we've got to track people all 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 the fucking time and put them on facial recognition so that they can do things contact free and all this other stuff uh job market sucks people think their retirement is gone and it probably is because social security is always on the edge of bankruptcy and it's a ponzi scheme and so is the dollar and so is everything else and it's all fucking sucks Society is bad. Playgrounds can't be repaired because funds are going to other bullshit places in town, like funding yet more police cruisers and MRAPs so that they can continue to make their fucking uh, uh, performance numbers, which are just quotas with a new shiny label. 
Um, all this stuff combines to create a shit society. And then people wonder why people want to escape. Have you looked around lately? People want to escape because of what the government does. What its corporate cronies that it creates does. They want to escape because this place has been made perpetually more terrible to expand the profit and power of people who already had it. Make no mistake, this isn't a renaissance for minorities. This is just letting them in on the torture too. Society is terrible. Addiction rates are up. Suicide rates are up. Divorce rates are up. That so many things are just so fucking insanely bad right now that everything is getting progressively worse. And ultimately, there's going to be a lot of addicts that come out of that situation. And the solution isn't a war on drugs. Because all that does is give the police yet more power, give the government yet more power, allow them to be more corrupt and make more money and more profit and more power. And the people know that. You ever talk to an ex-con who's who's worked for like sweatshop wage labor, uh, uh, fucking pay? They'll they'll tell you, it's just slavery with a shiny coat of anti-crime paint. Lincoln didn't fucking end the slavery. He codified it and universalized it. He said it could be done as punishment for a crime. And then that's when you got Jim Crow laws. And then that's when you got gentrification, so that people couldn't even be in their own neighborhoods anymore. That's when you got all these racist policies, including your precious gun control, including your precious war on drugs, which so happened to be helped by Reagan and his CIA bullshit pushing drugs into the inner cities. Man, it's almost like they want it this way. <laughs> and so, yeah, there are a lot of people who want the drug form of the hemp plant. They they couldn't care less about all these uses of it because they don't have the money to start a business. That costs too much. Little girls having their lemonade stands shut down because they don't have the proper fucking business licenses to sell people lemons, sugar, and water should tell you everything you need to know about this. Because they know, those little girls know, so even you can know, Mr. Statist who's mad at me already. Um, the environment isn't good for them. It's not good for the most basic of merchants. So why would it be any better? For those who <laughs> are downtrodden and have like 20 bucks in their pocket. And they're like, I know a guy who I can get like a gram for 10. I'll just go to him. And then they escape. Temporarily. Their dopamine circuits and their serotonin circuits fire up to tell them, yeah, let's do this more. This doesn't suck so much. And I'm not just talking about weed. I'm not just talking about heroin. I'm not just talking about coke or psychedelics. What I'm talking about is booze too. Yeah. Or nicotine. You think because you're smoking outside your sober living facility or sober, you're a nicotine addict. You think because you're not on smack, you're somehow not an addict while you swirl down yet more Jack Daniels? I mean, I haven't been that way in a, a long time, and I gotta tell you, uh, I notice a difference. I have more energy. I have better social skills. Not great, but better. And, like, ultimately, when I talk about, like, getting together with friends and family, my first thought isn't, I'm gonna need so much booze to deal with this, or something. Uh... So, I don't understand how this couldn't be clearer. Or how this could be clearer, whatever. I, I, it's just obvious to me that we're in the wrong cage in Rat Park. 
and that maybe, also, humans don't like cages. Like, maybe this entire social control system is kind of the problem, and not people smoking a joint. Fucking weed is still a Schedule 1 narcotic. That means they think it doesn't have any medical uses, right? No. That's bullshit. They know it has medical uses, and that's why. That's why. Um, they... <laughs> <laughs> they have patents for the chemicals in it because they know that those chemicals do have medical applications. The U.S. government admits it. You know? They admit it. It's like, if if you think there's an easier way to describe cronyism than the state keeping... Uh, marijuana a schedule one narcotic while also saying that it's useful for all these things be my guest you know <laughs> I, i'm i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna read something here i'm gonna i'm gonna be reading some uh, major health benefits of marijuana uh because i think that this is a, a good sort of intro um, to, to, to the subject. It treats migraines. Doctors in California report that they have been able to treat over 300,000 cases of migraines with medical marijuana. It prevents Alzheimer's. THC found in marijuana works to prevent Alzheimer's by blocking the deposits in the brain that cause the disease. It slows tumor growth. The American Association for Cancer Research has found marijuana work to slow tumor growth in, in, sorry, has found marijuana to work to slow tumor growth in lungs, breasts, and the brain. Relieve symptoms of chronic diseases. Re research shows marijuana can help relieve nausea associated with irritable bowel syndrome in Crohn's. Treats glaucoma. The use of marijuana has been shown to reduce intraocular eye pressure in glaucoma patients. Prevents seizures. Marijuana is a muscle relaxant and contains antispasmodic qualities, which have shown to be very effective in the treatment of seizures. Helps those with ADD and ADHD. Marijuana is not only a perfect alternative for Ritalin, it treats the disorder without the negative side effects of the pharmaceutical. Treating multiple sclerosis. It works to stop neurological symptoms and muscle spasms caused by multiple sclerosis by pr protecting the nerves from damage caused by the disease. It calms those with Tourette's and ADHD. Marijuana slows the TH, the, the TH, sorry, the ticks in patients with Tourette's and relieves the obsessive neurological symptoms in patients with OCD. Ten, it helps relieve PMS. Anecdotal evidence shows that marijuana may relieve severe pain in cases of PMS, but it is a Schedule One narcotic, meaning no medical benefits. That's what they tell you, people, because they're lying to you and because they know you can't do shit about it. And this is all a vicious cycle, keep in mind. This is all designed to perpetuate their profit and power machine. Because every step of the way, from the things that make society bad, to the things that they do to control people after they try to escape from that society, all of those things make the state money and justify their jobs, positions, you know, the things that they steal from you to fund. Uh, all of that is all because... They don't fucking care about you. You know, that's the real reason the state didn't like Michael Jackson. Not only was he the king of pop and willing to make songs that were, like, catchy, like, you know, Thriller and Beat It and Billy Jean is not my lover. She's just a girl who thinks that I am the one. He can make all of that shit. But then when he starts talking about how bad heroin is for you and maybe discouraging drug use in an environment that overwhelmingly starts to talk about drug use in a positive light in MTV and everywhere else. When he starts to do that and say maybe, ha, ah, stay away from it. Uh, you know, morphine. If you ever want to listen to basically Michael Jackson doing industrial, that's what that is. It's really fucking good. So is. They don't really care about us. It's um a song about how, hey, they don't really care about us. All the violence and brutality and war that's inherent in this system is part of this system, and it's part and parcel of it because it helps those who, who are in charge. 
and they don't care about us. They're not here to represent us. You need to stand up for yourself. That's what he was saying, and that's why they had him killed. Pure, plain and simple. It's all also why they had to drag his image through the mud. Plain and simple. But all of that aside, just to say, they don't really care about us. Pure. That's it. And that's the reason that they're totally fine with all these people turning hemp, which could be just a useful plant that gives you basically everything you need, into a drug. Additionally, it helps all their cronies, because if people started making fuel out of it, they might say, hey, I kind of don't need this petroleum anymore. I, I, and I've got this, this plastic material that I can use to make plastics, because hemp can make plastics. I, I kind of need petroleum less. I kind of need the thing that the dollar is linked to less, because the dollar is the petrodollar, and it's all linked to the oil hegemony. That's the reason... There's so much war for oil and yeah, a bunch of other stuff, a bunch of other natural resources that, hey, you know, hemp can also work to help with. Uh, hey, maybe the reason they have it illegal is for them and not us. Maybe that's the reason it's federally illegal still. But hey, I'm just uh, an obnoxious long hair with posters in the background. Hey, new one right there. The donor who gave me money specifically to buy uh, to buy that, uh... Hope you're uh, happy with my purchase. I think it uh, conveys the intention well. But generally speaking, this society sucks. It's the wrong cage in Rat Park, and of course, there are fucking addicts. I watched um, a video for a song that I recommended to them over the shit. There's some verses in this that I think really work well, and also the the music video is is really fucking it's it's pretty heart-wrenching and also telling i think in an unironic way it says a lot about our society and in the verse the song is let them burn by nothing more and and they have so many good songs by the way so many good songs um if you're an anarchist and you don't listen to nothing more there's something fucking wrong with you um but the the verse goes, where's the truth? Where does it lie? All this smoke is burning my, my eyes. Fear the left, fear the right. Money is power, and power decides. Some are more equal than others. That's already fucking perfect, isn't it? Then it goes on to say, call in my drugs. Make me all right. And legalize whatever gets me high. They preach the blood in fear we trust. Embellish it, it sells itself. And I've bought in for the last time. It goes on, they repeat a lie till it becomes a fact. We gotta burn it down so we can build it back. Maze of mirrors, house of cards, you fix the fight rigged from the start. The bottom line is above our heads. Every Employ the flies to build your web. Fucking perfect. That's it. And that describes the prison system too. The prison industrial complex. Does it? How sick is it? How sick is it that they have prisoners printing license plates? That this was ever a fucking thing? Here, we'll give you some money uh, to cheaply produce the tags, the ear tags for all the cattle who dare to use transportation vehicles that they kind of need to participate in this economy. How dare they? We'll put these tags on them so that we can track them everywhere. And the prisoners will build them for us. The prisoners that the U.S. built by their war on drugs. The prisoners that the U.S. put there for their prison industrial complex. The prisoners from the excessive amount of laws that criminalize the poor especially and minorities disproportionately. The prisoners that were broken away from their family by people like biden and kamala harris the prisoners that are constantly there suffering under the yoke of a fascist regime that dares to call itself democracy still even after rigging fucking everything this is where we are we're in the united fascist states of america that's it 
There's so many fucking faces all over national monuments for a reason. Everybody wants a piece of the pie in emulating the bloodiest empires in history. So they had to one-up them. They had to make better, bloodier weapons and better, bloodier control mechanisms so that they could spread an empire across the fucking world. The U.S.'s empire would make Rome blush, and its fascism would make Mussolini cry. And you wonder why, instead of building things up, instead of being creators, people would rather escape. People would rather run toward the weed instead of the hemp. Well, that's fucking why. Because it's all about building that which can make the elites prosper while all of us suffer. Always has been. That's the reason this country that was all about uh, uh, inalienable rights and everybody's created equal and all of this other stuff. But hey, don't look at too hard at the fact that we massacre Native Americans, we kill slaves, we're bad with women, and we're just generally not very nice. Huh? Just ignore all of that. That's why I'm 100% okay with being called a commie when I share songs like, uh, like, like Just by Run the Jewels, which has the perfect fucking chorus hook. Fucking look at all these slave masters posing on your dollars. It's still slavery. It's just slavery to an economic system. And it's slavery to the state which keeps it there. You ever think about maybe the reason people are on drugs is because of other people? Because maybe if they had a better community that gave more of a shit, that was raised to not use collective punishment and emphasize the individual and be peaceful instead of using violence like hitting kids and cutting off pieces of their genitals and uh, sh shaming them whenever they act out of line. All of these things are just the result of a fundamentally violent system that has been brutal from the start. And ultimately, that's not going to get better no matter how strong the war on drugs gets the no no matter how many people you lock up no matter how many cartels you bust so that another one can pop up in its place or maybe two or three now that you've busted the territorial monopoly there will be a nice number of gang disputes and turf wars that you can now take off little pieces of the pie of and use civil asset forfeiture to shake down poor people yeah who huh i wonder why people would want to escape this I don't go this fucking far with my family, especially since, again, it's been almost 40 minutes. Uh, I try to cut it off before I get too depressing, but you know, it's hard not to, especially since I know that they're not 100% on the same page as me yet. But that doesn't mean that I won't try, and it doesn't mean that I won't try with everybody else who will listen, because guess the fuck what? I don't have shit else to do. I have all the time in the world to be a thorn in the spine of these people. These people are fundamental oppressors, and ultimately, they will destroy everything for a buck. That's what they do. And that's the reason that they're fundamentally okay with you losing everything during this pandemic, because then they have an even easier time controlling you. A starving and nearly homeless or homeless populace is so much easier to control than a ton of people who have innovated and made their lives amazing by using the means that were provided to them by nature. If the government stepped out of the way, there would be hemp on every lawn because people could finally seize the power into their own hands to take their lives back. But that's not how it is. Instead, we get indoctrination to be spineless Karens who snitch on everybody. Ooh, you're running without a mask. Huh? You better be vaccinated. Here, let us put our thing in your veins. It's like... It's mental torture every day to think about how fucking awful things are compared to how they could be if people just knew how powerful they were.
Hey, that's why I like Sonic. It's all about personal empowerment and using your individual skills to be the best for the revolution that you can be. It's something to think about, is all I'm saying. The entire fucking system is wrong, and it makes people want weed, not hemp. So if you like this rant, feel free to like and subscribe, share this places, I don't know. Fucking financially support me if you like my rants. But the point is that it is time to smash the state.